is Barbie. Hi, hello. You're watching Odivus Rex. I, I hope you enjoy. I'm basically just ripping this format from Swell Entertainment. Because fuck it, it works. Do I got a story for you? So today, I decided that uh, on a whim, I had been meaning to go see the Barbie movie, that I could just up and go and see it. And go by myself and take some notes and make a little video about it. Um, I got a lot more than I bargained for. Um, and <laughs> in a lot of ways, um, it's, it, it, it's real funny. Um, so th this is going to be uh, a, a, a play by play of my uh, from the moment of the idea to uh, go see the Barbie movie to now. So I hope you're excited. Um, the the crux of my my argument here, the the logic that went through my head, let me grab my other notes. <clears throat> so I'm going to be talking about a lot of the deeper themes. The, this this wasn't the the notepad that I took with me. This was this video's notepad plan. This, all right, if they're all over here, these are all my notes from the Barbie movie. Okay. So the Barbie movie has come out. It is by Mattel. If you don't know what Barbie is, grow up. Um, Barbie was a uh, toy created by Mattel. Uh, she can do anything, and she does a variety of different things. But as I think a lot of people, and especially women, young girls, or, you know, AFAT people uh, can relate to, is that society has different uh, intentions with things. And that what may have been good for girls, it, it, you know, in, in, in time speak, like what may have been good then has not translated well into the 21st century and into uh, more social and class and um, like gender societal awareness in general. Um, and I think that the Barbie movie does a really phenomenal job at exploring some, some themes and motifs uh, and realizations that I myself has have worked towards as a uh, male, cis male person. Oh, I know. Another white guy with an opinion about Barbie? Oh, ho, 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 ho. You can trust me. My shorts are sand. So, uh, I got real excited thinking about what could I do to talk about the Barbie movie. What would I go and take notes about? And so I asked my Discord, it's like, what would I take notes about? And they gave me like, you could take comment on this on that, which was really great. And I appreciate the ideas because it helped me realize what I wanted to do. Suki, you're gonna open up the blinds. You're gonna fuck up my lighting, my guy. Thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, a lot of the like interesting things like the one thing that I kept coming back to before I went to go see the Barbie movie was I remember all of the Barbie memes that were getting made uh, that were real popular. Like, this Barbie is blank. This Barbie is blank. Uh, this Barbie is doing blah, blah, blah. And uh, a question that I went into the movie with that I wanted to have an answer for is what is this Barbie doing? Let's solve the question. So I hope you'll enjoy with me uh, a little bit of chaos and energy as I relive to you my experience and how I ultimately realized about how watching Barbie made me realize a lot of things about myself and how I may have just quite possibly done the single best thing for myself ever by going to see a movie that started in, in nine minutes from a theater that is over 10 minutes from my house. Enjoy. So as you can see here, it was really fucking hot, and I looked fucking fresh. So I'm, uh, I, I'm fucking drenched. I'm so sweaty. We need to go five minutes, six minutes late for the Barbie movie. Let's just fucking go.
on our way to the Barbie movie. Um, there's a Jersey Mike's here, which people like, I'm sure. Fuck, it is so goddamn hot. It is like 120. Ugh. Okay, so I'm in, I am at seat A11. I'm literally at the screen. I forgot my, my glasses and I have to wear my sunglasses. So this is going to be very, very fun. Okay, so, um. So. The Barbie movie. I was thinking about all these different things, what makes up a good Barbie, um, wanting to have like a whole bit about like getting dressed in the fit and like gotta become Barbie. But then I had nine minutes to get to the movie. I had nine minutes before the, the, the trailers started. And I'm sorry, I like the trailers. It gives you an idea of what's coming out soon. And you tend to get extended cuts. Also, I saw the Borderlands 2 trailer for the game in theaters for the first time, but that was my first exposure to the Borderlands series. And I thought it was the coolest fucking shit ever. So yes, I do go and I like to see the previews. I prefer, I want time to sit on my phone before the lights go down. And I'm tired of pretending I don't. Maybe I should go to more movies alone. The last time I went to movies with somebody where we just went without having a high, Tyler and I went and saw Birds of Prey and then we had a pandemic, so then <laughs> anywho okay so it turns out i got like 10 minutes to get there so i'm sprinting to get there i i like change incredibly quickly i get into my car it is a hundred and twenty degrees in my car i live in phoenix arizona we're in a heat wave it's a wonderful time i love it i would not change it for the world pain Ah, but I ended up like speeding my way there. Well, not speed, going the comfortable speed limit, of course, but just like focused and like get up and go and let's go. We're going to do it right now. So let's go. On my way there, I saw a van covered in stickers with some of the most grotesque shit I've seen on a van covered in stickers, which is not a lot, but also surprising. I called my friend Denny and uh, had to tell her, uh, as she answered the phone, I didn't, I'm like, I have no time. I do not know when this car will move. And it's like, no, I'm not stalled. I'm just masturbating. Like, that was a sticker on the back of the car. Like, the fucking just in, like, insane shit like that. Like, that kind of energy. And I'm just like, I, I don't have time to take a picture because my phone is a GPS. And if I wiggle the cord, it won't work. So I had to do what I can. I had to use the phone on the car to call. Anywho, not Barbie related, but just part of my journey. Uh, I get to the uh, movie theater. I run in. There are six seats available left in this theater. Now, luckily I did go to an AMC, so they had the, the lounge chairs, which was very nice. But I had to sit in A11, which was third, three or four seats in uh, from the left of the very front row. And in my haste to make the movie at this time that I was already late for, I was still wearing my sunglasses prescription and I had left my glasses in my car and it was really hot and I wasn't gonna go run back out there and get them. So I said, well, maybe I can wear my glasses while I'm watching the movie. That's some Ken energy. No, if you wear polarized sunglasses in a movie theater, do you wanna know what you will see? Nothing, you will see nothing because that is what they do. They block out the light. Guess what they do in a dark room? They don't put that much light in there because it's so dark. They don't have to do that much light. And so I couldn't see it in HD. And so that means I didn't get to see Margot Robbie's feet in HD. Zero out of ten. Bad movie. What? I can't talk about the feet? Oh, 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 okay. Hey, so Zuki was sitting over here in this chair at one point. But he's sitting over here, so I just decided to do the other camera and we'll have him there. Just just ignore him. It's fine. He's fine. So I get to the movie. I'm sitting up front. You know, luckily I'm able to lean down, so it really wasn't too bad. But I was at like a weird angle, which I was not a big fan of. Um, and I was sitting next to, like, it looks like it was a packed theater. Um, it wasn't that big. It didn't have that many seats uh, compared to like a very large, large theater. But like, it was like pretty much sold out. Um, for like a matinee on a Saturday, a 3.45 showing. 
um, lots and lots of people, like, you could tell that they were, like, dressed up to go and have fun. Uh, and there was, like, a big group of girls. So technically, the seat that I had purchased, I didn't buy a gap. I didn't do the gap seat. I did the seat right next to them. So I just was like, I'm going to sit one seat aside, see how it works. But let's get into the movie. Uh, this will be a spoiler version because I'm not going to make an effort to make it not spoiler. I am sorry. Deal with it. That is life. That is that is what has to happen now. I am sorry. Um, so, uh, trailer uh, impressions. Let's see. Um, saw a trailer for The Haunted Mansion. Looks dank. Uh, the TMNT one looks pretty good. Um, they, I did not appreciate that. Uh, they seemed to be like they wanted to have a conversation, and I thought it was a funny, clever ad until it just turned into a TMNT trailer, which the movie does look really good. But they were like, Barbie's just, it's just pink. They're just pink, and, you know, they can afford it with their jobs or whatever. They can just do whatever we want, you know. They'll, they'll have those jobs while we have pizza. And all I could think was, man, it's okay to be angry at class disparity. And it is also frustrating to, you know, at the same time, acknowledge that a system is broken and also have to grapple with the fact that in order to survive at this current junction, we also still need to participate into it. And that internalizing that hypocrisy can be something that causes a lot of self-doubt and confidence issues and just erodes a lot of our sanity. Also, I think that the April in the movie, I think she's real cute. I love her, and I uh, hope maybe Nims will go see with me. What do you think, Zuki? Did you like it? Okay. Um, uh, I saw a trailer for Wonka. Um, it actually looked... It looked really good. It looked too good. Like, it's got Timothy Chalamet, so you know it's going to sell. And that's fine. I, I look... I, I, I'm a, I'm a shallow, shallow Malay Okay. I'll bring you right to him. I love, him. I love him as much as the next person, but it also, the filmography gave me a lot of, um, what is that? Uh, uh, it's the, that, that other Harry Potter one, uh, fantastic beasts and where to find them energy. And that's, uh, Hey, yeah. Like, I don't know. It feels like it, it looks good, but they showed all the best parts already. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like they also are kind of like, I don't know if that was what the story was. I, at the same time, who cares? They can do whatever they want. All right. So that was those notes. Um, now we're going to get into the formal movie itself. If you did not want spoilers, this is the end of spoilers. I will now be going into spoilers. I'm just going to go through and explain the movie with my commentary and notes uh, as I took them, as we go through them. Um, Let's dive into it. You ready? Okay. Uh, right off the bat, the beginning of the movie, hysterical. Very fun. Uh, I loved, uh, there's quite a lot of uh, references in this movie. Uh, the 2001 A Space Odyssey was really good. There's a few other Kubrick uh, references. Um, well, yeah, I think with The Shining, um, which in referring to The Shining as The Shining in, like, not just location reference, but, like, what, like, Danny has, from what I understand about those movies, The Shine. Um, I, I figured that the Space Oddity, uh, the 2001 Space Odyssey Barbie doll was smashing the Barbies, or the, the, the baby dolls. Hysterical, 10 out of 10. I, uh, great reference, uh, you know. What, what did I say? Uh, she can be a mother. I, I guess. I don't know. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Now I understand what I wrote. So I had to write in the dark. Like, and so I can't, like, my stuff's not always, like, in line. Uh, I wrote, is giant Margot Robbie real? Because they have her, like, as, like, the ad. Like, she's the obelisk. And I wrote, she could hurt me. Um... Um, let's see. Ooh, uh, there was a real fun comment about how, uh, with all the Barbies, like, 
uh, talking and laughing and in the song about how, you know, like, Barbie saw feminism and equal rights. Like, what are you talking about? Like, Barbie's everything. Barbie's love, Barbie's life. Barbie's your one-stop shop to get everything you need. Um, we got a lot of feet action, uh, surprisingly. So Odie's uh, Odiferous Rex's foot fun. Ugh, that was gross. Don't don't leave that in. Um, we got to see the iconic like stepping out uh, with the heels, which actually ends up being kind of like a, a bit of a plot point, like so that there actually was a good reason to show that, as opposed to from what the trailers made it seem like, which I'm like, yeah, it's iconic, but it is a little bit of like, you know, uh, objectification and whatnot, and uh, everything we could do. Uh, scene reenactment? I don't know what that's all about. Um, ooh, there was a line in... So, like, Bar the, the plot of the movie is basically that Barbie starts to have, like, these dark thoughts. Like, Barbie just is now, like, sometimes thinking about death and is not just happy with everything being the way it is all the time, constantly, and pretending, like, the, the feelings they have aren't real or that they're just, you know, whatever, and they get broken, and they end up having to uh, realize that whatever child she's bonded with, because uh, the Barbie, Margot Bravo's Bobby is the stereotype Barbie, so she's Barbie Barbie, like John Barbie, the, the Barbie of Barbies, um, who she herself doesn't do any of those things. She just has fun. She's Barbie. Um, and she ends up kind of getting like getting told by the weird one the, the the kate mckinnon's character who's very fun um that she basically needs to go to the real world and find uh the 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 the, the girl who has her barbie and like fix it um and, and understand it if she ever wants to like get back to normal because now everything's off everything's wrong uh and her and ken ultimately go and, and and do it and there's a lot of fun with like the way that they use imagination space in the movie uh, it's a very good time, um, very fun, but basically they go to the, the human world, um, things happen, and they're not actually in the human world as long as I thought they would be, and I'm really happy for that. It's more about what impact the real world has on the Barbie world once Ken discovers patriarchy, because in a way, Barbie, like, um... Barbie Land or whatever it's called. I think it's Barbie Land. Barbie Land is basically like the matriarchy and um, kind of like where men fit in that role, which I like, I, I have so many interesting, like um, it, it highlights aspects of like male identity that I feel like are not often talked about. Um, because a lot of the guys I want to talk about, like, masculinity and shit, are toxic as fuck. And it's, like, in defending those behaviors as opposed to, like, um, you know, wanting to do anything with those. So, um, let's keep seeing. Um, Dolls from the Dawn of Time, it was very, very funny. I liked that bit a lot. There's a lot of really good, um... A lot of good notes. Uh, what is it? Is a basic wait? Barbie is or Barbie is based was one thing that I thought. Margot's Margot Robbie's Barbie is very based. This movie is very uh, very progressive. Um, well, although I wouldn't really say so much, it's progressive. It talks a lot of progressive points. But it more so talks a lot about, like, I feel like that's just kind of where we're at in the world right now. And it's just kind of, like, acknowledging it a lot more. And I really, really liked and appreciated that. Uh, I really liked that at one point, uh, in the very beginning, when they're saying hello to all the Barbies, there's the astronaut Barbies. And uh, Marco Robbie looks up at the space Barbies and goes, yay, space! And... I just thought that was really funny. I thought that was good. Um, Ken is the ultimate simp. Um, I have, I could do uh, a whole hour lecture on Ken, but we'll, 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 we'll get to that at the end. Hey, Zuki, no, stop, stop playing with that chord. No, thank you. Ah, uh, okay. Um, 
Ken's a really big simp who's just in love with Barbie head over heels. Everything he's doing is for Barbie's attention and how it can affect Barbie. Uh, massive jealousy, all that. Uh, Alan, the Alan character is great. Uh, Ken's uh, Ken's best friend, uh, Michael Sarah, where there's only one of him in the movie. I think it's very funny. Um, I relate a lot to Alan. I appreciated Alan. I think he's great. Um, I loved the sheer amount of like, you know, we're gonna have a beach off. I'm gonna beach off all these people. There's there's so much gay undertones. I also thought for a second. I know I'm going a million miles a minute. That the Ryan Gosling Ken and then his his best cat friend who was a Ken. I genuinely thought that there was like more romantic tension in there. There's also times where like the board members of Mattel like are like holding hands and like not prominently in the scene, but it's like the end part of the scene. Like they're all getting into a car and like they're holding hands. I thought that was kind of fun, um, but they just threw that in there and normalized it. Um, I love that Ken's job is beach. Uh, let's see. It was all very good. Um, oh, I really liked that they showed the Barbie in the wheelchair. I thought that was really cool. And, uh, they actually, I made a point. I was really curious because I hate when companies will like be like, oh yeah, look, like we have like our, you know, like the, um, I don't know what the right word is. What is, is there's gotta be one second. Let me look it up. So when I look it up, it looks like it's just like, it's wheelchair Barbie or like, you know, it's just the Barbie fashionista doll with a wheelchair and ramp. I thought it was real cool that they showcased her. They had her, like had her in um in it was only in the one scene at the house party, um in the in the beginning. But they did have her in multiple shots, which is something that I tend to notice in movies is they'll have them in one one shot and then pure background, and they won't let them just like be part of the red normal shot. And in 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 this case, they did. I think that they could. They should have given her some speaking lines and stuff like. You're already right there, but I also understand. At the same time, ah, eh, is like, yes, every Barbie is a Barbie, and you could be a Barbie. He, she, we, and them are by Barbie. And I'm here to find the answer to the ultimate question. What is this Barbie? What is Barbie? And I do have an answer for that. Okay. Let's see. Um, lots of, uh, there was a lot of, there was another feet scene. So that was kind of cool. Uh, one thing that I thought was really interesting, my first sort of insight into the, um, the greater themes of the movie, is that it felt like what Barbie really wanted to be is authentic. And the struggle with being what we've always been, what we're supposed to be, versus what we'd actually like to be. Because when we're the way we want to be, things aren't always great. Things aren't always perfect and happy. And don't we want to always be happy? And it's like, well, why do we always want to be happy? It's like, so we never have to be sad. But I, I personally find sadness. Zuki, you're not supposed to hang out. My cat does this thing where he likes to, like, lick himself, but near power outlets or the power strip. And he'll just, you know, delete things that I have. So. Uh, what else? What else is there for Barbie? What is what is the Barbie to me? Uh, sorry if the audio is bad. Uh, we're just making videos. Hmm. Let me see what else I got here. Um, Barbie beats ass, which was cool. She decks a dude. When they go to the real world, that was fun. Um, Ooh. The the. <laughs> Ken discovering misogyny and patriarchy was such a fun, like, montage of, like, man, like, patriarchy is when men are in charge and ride horses. And I'm like, you know what? Yeah, Ken, it is. It is. It, it really is. And, and you love to see it. Um, I, I figured out who... Like, who the, the, the owner of the Barbie, who the, the linked Barbie was right away, and thought that I got misdirected, and then I realized that was right, so that felt good. Um, I think some of the, the stuff, like, that I thought, like, ultimately, you know, the goal is that the stereotypical, the stereotype Barbie, the Barbie Barbie, should just be authentic. Yeah, this Barbie has cellulite. 
This Barbie has done their best with what they've been able to do. This Barbie deserves praise. Um, I love that the, um, like, men making decisions is a whole thing, and, like, if we let them do it, and, like, nothing will be good. Um, I thought that the, so there's this part where, yeah, when, before she leaves, talking to the other Barbies about how influential Barbie must be on girls and, and everything in the real world, they talk about how, like, yeah, they'll probably just, like, applaud, like, like, like give you hugs and, and shower you with praise, because, like, you've done so much, because that's what Mattel says. And when they get to the real world and she gets torn down and called basically a fascist, uh, she has a full on breakdown because like, no, she is not, but what she represents and the ideas and like, like Barbie was made at a time to inspire girls. And that's great. But that, that level of inspiration and, and mass marketing has started to turn into the toxic like, well, this is the stereotype Barbie. This is the normal Barbie. Barbie, Barbie. If you you could be just like Barbie, and if you're any of the other Barbies, you're not normal Barbie. And that's, I think, the that's 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 the through line they're really trying to get with all of this. You know? Unseal that one. Let's see. Let me what else do I have? Um ooh, I really liked the the double entendres, uh, also the analytical humor was very, very funny. Um, but the, this, the, the head of Mattel, the boardroom, is all men who apparently know what's best for women, which was, like, good and classic. I will say it was a l I would have appreciated it if they let the men, like, I wish that, like, they would have let Ken be a little smart. Um, because... Maybe it's a little bit that not all men. You know, let's couch that for now. We'll we'll, we'll get back to it if we need to. Um, but I did find it very funny when they were like, hey, we can get everything back to normal. Can you just get back in the box? As in, hey, we can just have everything go back to the way it was when everything was good and not a problem for men to have to hear about. If you just are good with adhering to the regular, like what we've had as societal beauty standards. Is that Okay. Would it be all right if we just put, you're just a little lady. It's okay if a big, strong men put you into a little box and then everything will be good. And you'll be so pretty, please. Ugh, kill me. Uh, let's see. What else? I have, oh God, there's so many notes. Um, yeah, I don't know what some of these say. Uh, a female CEO in in the CEOs, yeah, that's right. It's just, just you know, are there any female? No. Uh, uh, Will Ferrell was really funny in this movie. Um, there, there was one, like there was a few jokes in particular that were pretty funny. Um, I really liked meeting Ruth, the whole scene with Ruth, and um, I was correct that when they showed Ruth, I'm like, I wonder if that's the person who created Barbie. And that would be a little bit of a meet your creator moment, which has a very funny through line that we'll get there soon. Um, I'm all on board personally for the depression Barbie, the anxiety and OC, uh, uh, the uh, depression Barbie, anxiety and OCD and other panic disorders are sold separately. I find that hysterical. Very, very, very good. Um, I'm dad. There was a, I forget there was a dad thing. Um, Alan beats ass. Alan is great. I loved Alan. Alan, when we say that, like, all men are trash, we're not talking about Alan. Although Alan also has flaws, because he should also learn to stand up for himself as well. He is also a victim of the patriarchy, but from, like, the patriarchy itself, which I do find to be very relatable, but also a very interesting viewpoint that maybe a lot of people... I don't know. I feel like the people who need to watch this movie to really understand this messaging are the people who are not going to go see this movie. And I hate that. This movie is so fun. I thought it was phenomenal. I, ah, oh, okay. Um, are we, aren't we all, like, there's a, the whole, like, brainwashing plot, uh, where they try to go around and fix it, uh, and they do, I, I love that it's like, you know, you, you have to, you're, are you just brainwashed? 
or you're just crazy and weird and like a bit of like accepting ourselves. The big theme is that humans are flawed and it's okay to be flawed. And, you know, uh, there was a really interesting point that I took notes on. Let me see. Um, oh, uh, there was a really good director's note about how, like, you know, just because you don't look like Barbie, but, like, they hired Margot Robbie, who does look like Barbie, so it's like, this was a bad... This would be a really good thing to say if we didn't hire Margot Robbie to be the actress right now. But, like, they made an editor's note. It was very funny. The, the use of the adult humor was so good. Like... I feel like a lot of this movie would go over kids' heads. This is a PG-13 movie that is, uh, just, like, it's just not rated R. As opposed to, well, it, they get a cuss word, so it's PG-13. You know what I mean? It's not, It's closer to the adult end um, in a lot of ways. Um, the Oh, man. One of the biggest themes that I fucking loved in this uh, movie was... With the the daughters, uh, the mother and the daughter uh, who work at uh, the mom works at Mattel and everything. Um, there's a real big part where they're talking about how, you know, they're, they're like being authentic. It's like you need to like we acknowledging the cognitive dissonance that comes from yes, we want to be good and we're all we're doing all these things, but we're also having a negative impact. Was the most important, the second most important takeaway I got from the movie, and something that I have been saying for a long time. And it felt very affirming to see that in a piece of media and for me to be able to recognize it. That, um, especially if you deal with narcissistic parents or um, dealing with, with uh, people who just don't, are not emotionally healthy and don't communicate effectively, um, you know, acknowledging that something happened, you know, like, acknowledging it, like, like, you know, the struggles of womanhood, like, hey, I understand that Barbie had, like, a really good impact and was meant, like, on the mom, Barbie was super influential, it was great for her, but for the daughter living in a more modern world, Barbie represents everything that's wrong, because it's adhering to standards that they can never attain to, it's this, you should always, like, this is the regular, like, you should always be skinny, but you don't, you can't say that, you have to be healthy, there was a line where Ken talks to some dude at a business building because that's, he's like trying to get a job and he's like, well, you don't have a doctor. And he goes, it seems like we're not as much massage me. It's like, we just got better at hiding it. And it's like, yeah, that's it. That's exactly it. Um, the cognitive dissonance is key to understanding and moving on in your relationships. Being able to say, hey, I understand that you did your best. I'm not trying to get, like, I'm not blaming you. I just need, want you to understand that I don't think that you have seen the full extent of the impact that you've had. Like, I don't think that you intended this to be the impact, but you do need to be aware of it. Because if you're not able to acknowledge it and be aware of the impact you've had, regardless of your intent, you can never change, grow, or, uh, or foster a deeper connection with others if you refuse their reality, if you refuse to acknowledge. Humans just want to be understood. Humanity is an important uh, aspect that we have in common with every other single person on this planet. And Barbie, sometimes. Okay, what else do I got? I don't know where all I was going with that. Uh, da, 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 da. I think I'm almost done. Um, the, the Kens doing the big beach off fight with their song was so good. I think that what Ken laments about, laments about in his song is also really fascinating. The I'm not just Ken song. Um, what is it like? Uh, I am finally... Like, you know, uh, wait, I'm finally, like, I just want to be in love with her. Like, if I'm dreaming or not, um, I don't want to keep dreaming. I, I, my notes don't make any sense anymore because, like, it was too dark to read. But, like, in his song where he's talking about how he's just Ken, it's like, you know, like, I love you, but you just view me as a friend. Um, it, it goes to something that I've talked about uh, in, uh, like, on my streams and stuff a lot personally, where there is this thing, like, growing up as, like, a cis male. Um, or the cis man, 
Um, when I was raised, I'm going to speak in gendered terms here, uh, just to keep it easier. But whenever I refer to boys and girls, I do mean uh, like assign female at birth, assign male at birth, just to be clear. So that like you know, the starting point, everyone can kind of understand the societal and gender roles and expectations that get put up. Science. Um, you know, there's a lot more than just two. Um, you know, boys in general um, are raised and often discouraged uh, unintentionally from being friends with girls and women. And what I mean by that is I distinctly remember from a very young age that when I would have friends that were girls or women, it was always always followed up with like oh you like her is that a crush do you have a girlfriend is that your little girlfriend and pete like it would make me so uncomfortable because like that wasn't it no it's not and you go no and they're like yeah sure and it's like these are children why are you wanting like why are you so invested in that side note i have a little niece now she's very very cute i have a lot of nieces but this is like my 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 sister that I grew up with, like, in the house, my biological sister, well, you know, um, we had the same parents. Uh, like, she had her daughter, Luna, recently, and, like, all I can think about is, like, like, I don't ever care. If she wants to tell me that she likes somebody, great. Otherwise, I'm never gonna assume that, because that shit's fucking annoying. There, it puts this expectation when every time I want to be friends with girls, it has to be... Like, what, like, it has to be that in a romantic sense, because that's what's expected of me, clearly. To the point where then it feels like boys are no longer able to be friends with women. They get mad and they just get friend zoned. They try to be your friend, they want to hit on you, and then they're not into you. So then you just try to be their friend, and then you're there, your friend, and then they are still in love with you, even though you're like, hey, like, you just got to move on. They're like, well, no, I thought it would happen. Like... I'm not, it's not to say that men are, like, blame-free for their behavior, and I, myself, you know, I, I definitely was not great when I was younger, you know, definitely fell into nice guy traps, fell into, uh, you know, Neil Strauss the game for a short period of time, uh, did not really do anything, like, it didn't get anywhere, but I will say, at the time, it did help build confidence, but, like, it did not last, and it did not work, and, like, it's a very toxic way of thinking, and you don't, want to think like that and you don't have to that's just it because it's like why can't i just be friends with women and it's like you can't it's free you could just do that you don't you don't have to fuck your friends but if you're lucky you may get to fuck your friends so get as many friends as you can dumbass <laughs> speed hack misogyny i'm taking the patriarchy but you know what we're getting something out of it Call it the patriarchy. Do, do, do. Editor Moxie put patriarchy. Go with the pay that I said. My cool, like, gun metal, like, bullets and shit. Yeah. Moxie, I hope you edit this video for me. Um, let's see. Uh, the I'm just Ken thing. Yeah, like, Ken's individuality. Uh, this, the Barbie is Alan. I, I loved Alan. I just related a lot. Um, Kens are made to choose Barbies. Oh, that's right. That was the big thing that like Kens were literally made as an accessory. And like the it's always it's Barbie and Ken. It's Ken and Barbie. Instead of it's Barbie and it's Ken. It's it's two different. They are their own people. And I think that was like a really, really good theme. I wish they would have like for me a cis male, I do wish that they would have, like, gave a little bit more juice for Ken's storyline and their messaging, but I also recognize that, like, what we already got was more than I expected and, and, and more than enough, uh, and I don't want it at the cost and expense of the other important messaging for uh, anybody, you know, AFAT people, uh, and anyone who can relate to growing up and, and how women and, and, and are treated in our society. So, um, you know, I can do that. Uh, I really love the I am Kenuff sweatshirt at the end. I really want a shirt that says I am Kenuff. Uh, I can't get enough of that. Um, the, the ending of the movie, I thought, was really, 
really beautiful where basically there's a, a, a point where like that she meets Ruth again and like she it's like you literally get to make cr your creative and it's this really really beautiful like heartfelt scene and like Ruth talks about like how being a human can be so uncomfortable sometimes and it just felt so real I felt like I needed, like I'm so glad that I went and saw that movie because that is something that I have been learning to deal with and become more aware of and struggle with, and I I, I just think it's fascinating. Um, that just it, it is it really is uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to be aware of the injustices and things that are happening in the world. It's uncomfortable that people who don't know you and have no and will never have an impact on you get to decide whether it's legal in your state to have autonomy over your own body and health. You know, it's, 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 it's exhausting. It's uncomfortable to live in a world where it would just be so much easier if we all just could help each other and wanted to help each other. But instead, no, green avarice takes over. Um, I, I'm kind of getting into the, the crux of the video here. Um, and I, I'm going to save my final thoughts and the last few scenes of the movie uh, for the very end. Because now we're going to divert for a little bit to talk about God. All right. Hey there. So we got to talk about God. So in this movie, there is a point where Barbie decides to follow Ruth and basically go to the void where Barbie can literally ask their creator anything. Um, it's a very interesting scene, very compelling scene, and we're going to talk about that. But would you like to know what happened to me after I saw this movie? Um, as, I, as the credits rolled and I was sitting there uh, kind of like collecting my notes and kind of processing it, like I had almost cried. Um, I cried a little bit. Um, and then I just kept getting distracted because the movie kept going. But like, it, it, as I've kind of like sat on some of these themes, they, they've really resonated with me and things that I've worked on and, and figured out up to this point. And there was a, a group of girls that are a group of women that were near me that um, they ended up like, they, they were like talking and like being like, yeah, like I really wonder like what kind of like perspective it would be like if you were like a guy you know, whatever. And so like, since I was still there and I could like overhear them and like, there was, there was more to their conversation than I overheard that. I was like, yeah, I'm like, it was good. I cried and the people who would need to see this movie won't. So that's okay. But yeah, it was very good. Um, I was like, I was taking notes and stuff and they're like, oh my God, you were taking notes. And I was like, yeah. And they're like, what were you taking notes on? And I was like, well, I'm like, well, honestly, like it was just kind of mostly just like what was happening so I could think about like it's more to like jog my memory about the things I wanted to talk about and yada, yada, yada. And I mentioned like, well, like, you know, I thought it was really interesting how it's like you literally in a way they kind of talk about how like you basically got to meet God and ask God questions. And they were like, oh, my God, you know, like, have you have you ever like had a have you ever spoken to God? And I just immediately realized, oh, no. This very sweet blonde girl in white with her, you know, tan sun hat and parcel bag. Um, I know I'm I know I'm I know I'm coming for somebody right now. And I don't mean you, but you do know that like you get what I'm saying. And and she they, they end up like talking to me about like religion in like I'm standing, like the movie theater's up, they're sweeping the seats. I'm just standing there, like, because I didn't want to be rude. But I also, like, don't want to, like, talk about it. Like, they're like, yeah, like, you know, actually, like, you want to know if you want to really get, like, an unbiased view in a way that typically God talks to you is by, you know, reading the Bible. And, like, you know, there's actually, like, some good free apps. Like, you actually don't even have to buy it. Like, you know, that you could actually view it. So you're not seeing it through any sort of lens or anything. You could just see the words as they are. And then, like, you know, a lot of times something happens. And, like, have you ever heard of, like, Jesus Christ? Has anyone ever spoken to you about Jesus Christ before? And I'm like... Yeah, man. Uh, actually, yeah, quite quite a bit. Uh, I, I I do exist, uh, and I, I I'm aware of it because they won't let you they they won't let you forget that Jesus exists for ten minutes, ever, at all times, and it's just like okay, like as someone who grew up uh, a, a raised Christian, um, and just is 
for lack of a better term, agnostic. I don't like, I just don't care. It doesn't matter. Like we're here now and what we do here actually matters because there's a legitimate impact that it immediately has on things when you do them here. Instead of like, well, I gotta just make sure I have a good time in the future. It's like, well, you could also just improve the situation now. You could just do that. All right. So it was a very like uncomfortable, it was a conversation that turned from like really cool to like a little uncomfortable. And then I was like, all right, well, thanks. And then like just got up and left and tried to have a good time and leave, but uh, not always in the cards for me. Um, but I thought that was kind of funny that they did. They, I basically got like approached. I saw the Barbie movie and they're like, would you like to find God? Uh, so, yeah. Um, if you've made it this far, I'd like to let you know that I do have an answer. I do have an answer for what is Barbie. I, um, I spent a lot of time thinking about it on my way there, uh, about 10 minutes worth, because that's how long it took for me to get there. Um, as well as, like, on my way home and just, like, throughout the movie, like, what is Barbie? What is, like, what are they really trying to get at, like, with the meme? To exp to understand the meme on a more, more than just a memetic, a memetic level. Um, at the very end of the movie, uh, Barbie goes and talks to uh, Ruth, um, Ruth Handler, who is the original creator of Barbie. Barbie is based off of her daughter, Barbara. Um, and, like, they're talking to them. Um, and, like... She ends up, like, asking her a lot of questions. And, like, that's where, like, the whole being human is uncomfortable. Um, and then you're something. Um, there's there's a point where Barbie... Like, the part where I cried in this movie was Barbie is, is crying, talking to Ruth, and looks at her in the eyes and asks, Do you give me permission to be human? I'm like, yeah, first and foremost, no one is going to give you permission to be human. You can't be given permissions for something that you naturally, innately are, and just, it just is. Regardless of everything, you're still you. You're human. As much as you want to believe that you may or may not be, or you're any different, you're not. Human is human is human. Um, you know, being human is not something you ask for. It's just something that is. And I think that it was just really nice to hear somebody say that, to, to just be so direct and clear about something that I think all of us can really relate to. I think a lot of us have gotten ourselves to that, that question of just, can we just be allowed to be human, to be flawed? to have mistakes, to, to just, oh, dude, we're trying real hard to do our best and we're, we're not working with everything. We do not have the resources that we would need to get where we need to go, but God damn it, we're fucking trying. And, and Ruth just looks at her and is just like, you're you. Yeah. Like, Barbie, you can be, you can be, you, I made you because you could be anything. You could be anything you want to be, but you've always been human. And I, I think that that was just really, really beautiful. And it, it, it just got me going. Oh, yeah. And everybody clapped, which, like, everybody clapped at the end, which, like, okay. So, like, totally cool, right? Makes sense. You can clap at the end of the movie. But they also clapped after, like, a few different speeches throughout the movie. And I'm like, uh, we're watching a film? They didn't put subtitles on, so can you guys quit your clapping? But I didn't say that. Because that wouldn't be very Barbie of me. Cool. Anyway, if I, if I had to give you an answer, because I guess I should, let me go to the drawing board and figure it out.
it's also clear we're asking the wrong question. Everything comes back to Barbie. The end of the day, what is Barbie? You can, what is Barbie? Barbie's human. Thank you. Spill my drink, boo!